How did you end up in contact with the Cali Cartel? Uh, I started with a couple of different ways, really. It was, again, through the people we knew already. And then Curtis had his contact from previously. Uh, and that, that was a very strange first meeting as well with, with Lucho, who was the, the head of the cartels. And I went to uh, Bogota for the first time. And um, we went on a meeting. First time I'd met Lucho and all his lieutenants was there. It was like walking into a courtroom, really. I didn't know it at the time. But they'd not heard anything about what had happened. So 3,000 plus 1,000 Curtis got involved with had gone missing. So they'd lost 4,000 kilo, 3,000 involved with Curtis. And not with Curtis, with, with the uh, Europeans from Belgium and Holland. And everybody was still either in prison or had not come back to tell them what had happened. And that was the first questions with, with the... Uh, I had the, the friend who'd gone over with me, Michael. I was talking, laughing about it this morning, about how how tall he stood on the on the meeting. You know, he stood there with his chest out and everything because it, it was his... He'd never been at that level before, neither. And uh, as soon as the questions started coming out, his, his head went down. He just got lower and lower. And he, in the end, his fucking shoulders was up like that. That's why we ended up calling him No Neck. <laughs> started off... Proud as punch, and then ended up fucking shoulders shrunk because yeah. he was saying, You know, what happened to our 4,000 kilo of cocaine? We well, want to know, and they was asking it me. And uh, I told them who I was, and there's people walking in and out checking who, who I was and looking into whatever they were looking into because I think they had quite a high intelligence uh, network set up. And they were checking out who I was, and, and eventually they realized that what I'd said, but I'd I wasn't involved in that. I was doing my own thing and I was in prison. I met this bloke there and I don't know about that side of the story, but this is what I do know, I told them. And apparently I was lucky to walk out of there. It was uh, more or less a question and an answer thing. And if you got the answer wrong, you weren't going home. So oh. that's why I know next shrunk because he was listening to it in Colombian, mm. in Spanish. So I missed quite a bit of it. So I just got the highlights of what happened to our 4,000 kilo. Did they think you were involved in it? Yeah, at first, yeah. yeah but What's going through your mind then if you <coughs> say something wrong, you're dead? Do you, do you panic or do you try and stay as calm as possible? No, you stay, you, you've got to stay calm. You can't, if you panic, you're dead. So you, you've got no choice. I don't know. You just carry on. Because I knew I had nothing to do with it. And if you do get wrapped up in it, well, what, what can you do? I'm looking at, well, there's six main uh, Cali Cartel leaders and, who knows what was outside? I know there's quite a few bodyguards out there, so you're not going anywhere. And we was in a big penthouse on the top of a, a big shopping centre that they owned. So it was controlled all the way down, so you just had to answer the answers. And big no neck, what was he? He <coughs> shut himself in. Oh, completely. Uh, he, he, I could say he was fucking six foot six when he walked in. He fucking, yeah. I could come midget donkey palm when he walked out. He's walking in feeling proud as if he's going to meet top boys and organising deals, yeah. but... You have got it put on. Yeah, he soon changed. Four thousand was. Yeah, it became. Uh, but four thousand kilo. What's that fucking? That's over a hundred millions worth. Yeah, it's, it's nothing to them though. They're, you're talking twenty thousand kilo. He, he was sending. Lucho was sending three thousand kilo a week to America, and uh, every week the same plane that took the cocaine brought the money back. That was just one of his things. He, he was the leader at the time, but he's 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 in America now. He's, I think he's thirty floors underneath below ground and he'll never come out again when they, when they went and got him a few years into my sentence the uh, he went out on a night out into bogota and that was the last he knew he woke up fucking three stories below ground and that's where he'll be forever he'll never come out again fuck's sake man what's these people like what when you meet them are intimidating or just no no they just you can just you just you just mm. looks like you suit on shirt on calm as you like wouldn't even know you know they're not uh, but you, you see them the entourage that they have with them the bodyguards that they have with them everybody's got uh, it's not overtly aggressive it, they, 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 they do hide the guns but when you're pulling up to their houses that's when you see what the, the capabilities of a man and what they've got and what they own just a different world then <laughs> 